Hi, everyone. How many of you went to sleep last night and couldn't sleep because you didn't know what happens with a block when you receive it or when you want to read it from this? Dozens of hands. But I'm going to tell you, did you know that when you receive a block from BitSwap and you want to write it to disk or when you want to read that block to send it to someone else by BitSwap, did you know that it goes through an ID block store that allows you to have identity hashes? That is, what an identity hash is, is you can inline content if your content is small enough that it fits into a hash size. Wow. <laughs> did you know that it goes through a ledger, which is a cached block store, which will catch using an IR IRC cache, which is a adaptive replacement cache, and then we'll use Bloom filters to improve lookups. Wow. 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 Did you know that once all those layers are through and you just have the bare block store, you will still talk to a data store, and that data store is batched, so it won't be hitting the disk all the time, but rather try to batch all the things together and do a single write? And did you know that that data store can be implemented by a number of things like Badger DB, like FlatFS, it can be in memory. Did you know all those things? No. That's why it was so hard to go to sleep last night. <laughs> did you know that IPFS also has a repo interface on top of that that uses that same data store to do a bunch of other stuff, like Friedel will tell you right now. All right. So there's some other stuff that you want to store in your IPFS node, like what is the configuration, what is the version, all those fun things that you really want to store, but most people really don't want to think about anymore. Well, it's all lifted in your IPFS repo. And because we have this nice data store abstraction below here, we can just you know, put stuff and delete it whenever we want. And that's really cool. 